guys, it's me, Frankie. Right now, I am in Hiroshima on the Rabbit Island. I decided to do a very spontaneous day trip. I mean, I planned it a few days ago, but yeah, I just figured because I think for like cherry blossom season, the tourists are gonna be back in full swing. So I just wanted to do this and then go back to Miyajima while I have the chance. Like, cause my schedule's been pretty free recently, so I don't know when I'm gonna get busy again. So I might as well take advantage. But yeah, so after this, I'm gonna head to Miyajima because they finally finished remodeling the Tori. Like, um, I saw it in 2019, and it was like right after they started like remodeling, reconstructing it. So it was completely covered in scaffolding. Um, yeah, so this is kind of like my revenge. Hi again, it's voiceover Frankie. So I had a lot of free time in February and I decided to take this day trip to Hiroshima. My heart was set on visiting both the Rabbit Island and Miyajima in the same day and it is doable but I don't recommend doing it in one day like I did unless you're really pressed for time. It would be much less hectic to stay overnight and visit each island on different days. The Rabbit Island is pretty far from Hiroshima city. It's about two hours or so by local train. So I thought I would do that first. I took the Shinkansen to Mihara Station and then I transferred to a local line which took me to Taranoumi Station. From there you can walk to the ferry port. They have a little gift shop and inside the shop there's a machine where you can purchase your ferry tickets. I'll leave some info below with the ferry schedule. They leave about every 30 to 45 minutes um, but the weekend and the weekday schedule is a little bit different. It was 720 yen for the round trip, and it's half price for kids. The ferry is only a 15 minute ride, so not too far. As soon as you arrive on the island, there will already be some bunnies waiting near the port. I didn't realize this until it was too late, but they don't sell any bunny food on the island. So you have to get it before you get there from the gift shop. There was also a family mart by the train station, so you could also get some fresh veggies there. Despite me not having any food though, they were still pretty friendly towards me. Though the rabbits are super cute, the island does have a sad backstory. This place was used as a secret base for chemical weapons research during the Second World War without the locals knowing. So you can only imagine what kind of health problems people had after this, both the workers at these chemical plants 
and the local people. No one lives there anymore except for about 22 staff on the island's one and only hotel. There are also about a thousand rabbits who live here. Some say the rabbits were brought to the island to help detect remaining gas leaks, and they pretty much live here now without predators. Hi, I love you. The island is pretty small, but I would recommend staying there for at least a couple hours so you have time to feed the bunnies, go to the visitor center, visit the poison gas museum, stroll around some of the ruins, and enjoy the views of the sea, because it is an island. When I posted about the island on Instagram, a lot of people said they saw very sick looking and injured bunnies there and that the rabbit's only source of food is what tourists give them. To be fair, I didn't explore the entire island, but the ones that I did see looked quite healthy and peaceful. But I guess if any weren't doing well, they probably wouldn't have been by the ferry port greeting the visitors, so yeah. Um, I do know though that there is a group of dedicated volunteers who visit the island every single day to provide food and care for the rabbits. Even during the height of the pandemic, the volunteers were there and the rabbits are not spayed or neutered, it seems that requests for spaying and neutering have been denied. So definitely keep that in mind if you're thinking of visiting. I had already visited the main sites in Hiroshima a few years ago, like the Peace Memorial, the Ruins of the Dome, the Peace Museum, which I highly recommend visiting. At that time, I went to Miyajima as well, but as you saw in the beginning of the video, they were renovating the tori at that time, so it wasn't very picturesque. During my first trip, I tried Hiroshima's famous foods like okonomiyaki and oysters. I did make a vlog about it, so you can check that out if you'd like. The video is a few years old, but it's still relevant, I think. So yeah, this time wasn't really food focused. I just wanted to see both islands in the same day. I left Osaka around 6 a.m. and I got back around 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 9 p.m. Yeah, that was uh, exhausting, but possible. Um, yeah, so enjoy the, the tori and the deer. I don't have time for a sit-down meal, but I could not leave without something. Look at this. Rilakuma momijimaki. Souvenirs as well. Let's try it. Itadakimasu. Say some funnel cake. Natsukashi. Oh my gosh. 
I was not in a rush, I would get like five more of these. As always, thank you so much for watching. The vlogs I have coming up are from a couple months ago, so if you want the most up-to-date travel ideas, definitely check out my Instagram. I share stuff on there in more real time. Anyway, that's all. Catch you later. Bye!